It's your boy E. Tally back at it again with our special day of the week that I like to talk. And now, real quick, my audience I'm looking for are uncommon basketball players, the guys that want to take the uncommon approach. And I'm here with the, the owner and originator of Uncommon, Coach Van Landerham. Go ahead, Coach. Take it over. Man, I appreciate you, Coach uh, Tally, for all that you're doing. And um, I just got back from DFW. It's a great, great camp. Um, you know, following the gasso out there in the fall classics. I got to watch a lot of players and uh at the gasso. And then I got to work with um, you know, 2025 20, players at my final camp up there in DFW. And and again, meet new coaches. All three new coaches on staff were were guys that I knew their head coach. So it's man, it's just good connections. I like to always meet a young rising coach that wants to move up in the college ranks because they're enthusiastic at camps, they're learning. Their evaluations. I mean, it's it's a win win. So got to work with Texas Western and and Collin County and NAU staff up there, and it was it was a good uh, it was a good day. It was a good day uh, to end really fall camps in general outside of the finale. That's more of an invite only of the best of the best players to reward them for my camps. Now, real quick, uh, you said this is the first time you got a chance to work with a few new colleges. Now, was this something that you bridged the gap on to make sure that you do get fresh new faces up there? Or was just something that you just had, you know, you knew relationships? No, I mean, I, I always do that uh, for just relationships. But typically, I have the race with the head coach. So, Coach Wanamaker's a new head coach. He's trying to create a culture. I coached against Wanamaker. His ass hit the winning. People don't know this. When I first should Oh, Lou, uh, we uh, – uh, we're in the championship. We had no business in the championship with Texas West and a monster and freaking Wanamaker. I told his assistant, he traveled, by the way. He traveled. I keep telling him that to this day. He took three steps, but they gave him the guy that he was all American and knocked down a runner to beat us by a point. Now, we'd have been champions in year one. So, and I had a San Antonio kid that nobody wanted, Eddie Ortiz. We ran a quick hitter and missed a shot. Man, much love, Eddie Ortiz. Like, it was right on, right in front of the bench. Bam, I would have won it. So, uh, but Wanamaker's a great guy. He just got a new program. Or he just became a new head coach. So, it's great to have his assistant on board. His assistant I knew when he was sitting there, he's not at Texas West, and these young coaches, they move up the ranks. That's They got goals, you know. So, it was great to get Coach Tab on, on uh, staff. Collin County's always one that, kind of follows my leads, calls my leads. And again, I've known Jim Sagone. I'm, he's a 30-year legend out there. And I just told those kids, man, you don't understand. Coach Sheffield, the top assistant at Colin, he, Colin runs kind of a real structured, four-high, old-school system. It's good. He, I know what players he's got. I know what players he gets. But they don't understand. I said, look. Coach Sheffield, if he tells Jim Sagona, a guy in the Hall of Fame, he knows a lot of people that this kid's plenty good enough. Man, they want to help kids. I mean, I was in those boardrooms. So you, you don't know. You may not fit Jim because it's Sagona's system. These kids don't understand. But if Sheffield likes you today and tells Jim, damn, there were three players for sure we like, he may play, she may call, but he's, he may, he'll tell three people about him sitting on that wall. And, and so that's all I told those kids. And so it's great to have Shepard on staff again. That's his second camp he's worked for me. Uh, and then a young guy and uh, out there, they uh, have a brand new NA, uh, NAI up there in the northern part of Dallas by Denton. Just that a person I didn't know. I want to try to get to know him because that's a good space for me to continue to grow. And I don't sell nothing, but 90% after the camps, College coaches love it. Like I said, it's not uncommon to what I'm doing for them based on the challenges they have in researching some of the things you can see straight on at my camp. And that's what I like about what you're doing to where though you're right. It's not something that but, but, but the fact that I know you, that's the part about it that you have to understand that what you're doing brings value and brings a really, really good thing to what we need in this space that we're in right here and the reason why you know i i, I don't want to name drop anybody but it felt good when when, when, when we was helping little james and was like hey i need to call you and 
and you getting on me, hey, man, we need to do them one-on-ones and things like that. But to know you personally, to know that you're going to call me and make sure I'm doing that's that's the value of what you're doing, I believe. That's just me. That's just old coach style being an old head, being a guy who still likes to, to pick up the phone and talk to people. I like that value that you bring, and that's what I look forward well, to. Thank you, because because I'm telling you, my 90% of my program, they don't understand, is coaching the players from the back. And if they follow the plan, I'm discovering talent in camps. I'm not discovering it, and I'll, I'll say this again, I'm not discovering it as a guy who, I mean, again, there's guys in every space. They have a lane. My experience is sitting in a boardroom for 20-something years at every level and being the lead coordinator and that was my job was on the line. Like he, so there's a lot of thought, a lot of research. So the guys that get the most out of mine, if I don't hear from them, like I was calling you about James, I said, I need to talk to James. I want to talk to James because I know that anybody previous to this year, the ones that I'm coaching one on one about some things they must do, they get the most out of it. And it's funny you said that because I had a couple of local kids. And I'm okay with saying this. I'm not naming anybody. Like, we haven't seen enough value and exposure. Well, that's the fine line of credibility. For, so they're going to pay somebody that's maybe promised them something right now. And I'm going to tell you, both of them have things that I, first of all, it's a longer process, unless you're D2 plus or D1. Their exposure comes a little later. But they they really haven't had enough one-on-one -on -one calls or taken advantage like some kids that are very similar talent wise of understanding what they got to do before the season to elevate their game in certain areas, to get me the right game film. I'm giving you a gap. And, it, and the hard part for me when I hear that and I cringe is like, ah, uh, I can't push profiles because they all stop and look at James and I can bury James. And then he's labeled D three forever. Okay. So, Again, there's a fall plan, a spring push. A fall plan, a spring push. Summer camps, fall camps with college coaches on staff. What I said, they're going to give me all their notes. If seven names are listed by three coaches as college-level prospects from college coaches, that's who my calls are tonight. So that means the foundation's there. But now you got to learn what you do best what you need to do moving forward, what games will represent you, and what levels we want to share them to before I make a push. If you're D2 plus or Division One, to get panicky. Well, Bobby's got an offer. I don't want to. Well, you're not D1 or D2 plus. I've heard, hey, Hunter McNelms, watch that name. Hunter McNelms from Sanger. He's playing, I'm at a D1 level now. And he was D3 for seven months in my program, but he set up calls. He set up a call for Thursday. I, he's, he's, that's a real recruiting game plan. And who's benefited? Hunter McNelms is going to go from literally what the D3s are hoping for that he slips to, and on the uncommon approach, he, he was the baddest boy in the gym. I'm just saying that Sunday, everybody thought that. He knew what stood out. He talked at a higher level. He got people in line, not just a player. His his defense is 10 times better than when he first got in my program. He's fixed some things. He can take it off the bounce instead of being a nice six five standstill shooter. Uh, I don't when I see all the notes, listen to him D2 plus D1, it gave me validation to send him today. I've already sent him to 120 Division II buddies. He's a no-brainer. I can do that now. Give Hunter credit. So the two kids that are going to go play thousands more somewhere else, they're starting to panic. Well, you're not. They had time. I said, oh. I mean, I'm pretty good at what I do, and I'm pretty good in the spring. If you look at my results, he needs more time. That's all I told him. Sometimes they want to hear it, but I, I mean it from my heart. He needs more time. He's going to have to grow some facets if you want money offers. So that's the – that's that's a perfect example of what's happened in the last week between a hundred McNams and a couple of kids that say they want to go elsewhere because they're not getting call after call right now. It's not the way it works. It's a it's a okay. journey. It's a long process. 
No, it is. And that's, that's why, again, that's why I want to make sure I give this platform to you and to allow you to explain it. And each week we're going to do it. And then, you know, we're going to slow down a little bit because there's going to be some time in between. But every get again, you have this platform to dis- to explain what the uncommon approach is to where as though, again, you're not an uncommon person in the program, but what we're doing, we're looking for the uncommon players. And, I, and again, I believe in it. I think it's a great thing. It's a great opportunity because you said something very important last week. I don't remember you saying this. You said you look for the players that are having the hardest time to be noticed. You want those guys. And that's important to me because – go ahead. Go ahead. Well, well, I mean, just the platform itself. So some of that is true, and maybe I didn't word it exactly right, but some of it is just the layout itself. Really, you can find out two things, and it, you can find out if a kid's really serious about and loves basketball. I mean, it, it didn't, then his return of investment and paying for help, he he'll get a lot out of it because he's really that's just that's his real passion. In other words, he can beat some people out that are more talented than him in my layout. He can just flat out beat them out, out tough them, out work. He may not shoot better than them. He may not dunk it, but that kid's at least serious. And so instead of paying 4000 somebody doesn't know him, so that kid, yes, I, I like to discuss. But on the flip side, you know, the kid that's good enough and he doesn't have any calls and they're struggling, they've been to all these select tournaments, they've seen 50 coaches on the sideline, they still haven't got a call. And my camp, all that really means when I say top prospect or is coaches need winners. These kids don't understand. You can fall flat, but they're not, they're not dumb. They're not going to hurt you if you fall flat. What hurts you is you fall flat and you get your palms up and you stay down. And you, put, you can hide that with 200 players on unsigned senior showcases or the All-American showcase. They're in four courts. And I, I'll tell people again, even if I went to that gas cell as an ex-coordinator, my packet would have had the six names that we already wanted. But we already sat in the boardroom, watched film, called coaches, researched toughness, researched uh, how they play under the rest, researched coachability, researched uh, can you win with them, researched uh, are they a great teammate, research, research, research. So when we get there, the talent, they already got to be talented, but there's a hundred talented kids that all look the same in Dallas. We have eliminated the other ones. So in my platform early enough, if you're not on every ranking or if you're one of those other hundred kids and you just don't know, man, you, you got a chance to win the day, which is a second component that's going to be huge in January and beyond when, when rosters change. Or when coaches get clarity, I can explain it to them blue in the face. Parents, when I was a college coach, the main difference, it ain't, they, like, we still look for winners. We still like the portal doesn't hurt winners and you got to be a good enough player. But the main difference is it's pretty hard at West Texas or Texas State. If I didn't know if we were going to have two or four. So I got to kind of stay in contact with credible resources. I have to stay in contact because think about a college coach. When that spring break is over, you may have two guys walk in and shock you and leave, and these kids don't get it, even where your where your nephew's at. They don't know what Coach Omar's talking about if they're 17 and 14, but they're probably making changes too, but they got to wait because of the APR. They got to wait because of their academics so Bobby doesn't get on a bus. They, uh, that's facts of life. So they may wait till May to pull you in and either drop you to a partial, uh, move say we got that's how it works. It's a one year contract. So what what's changed is the amount of roster spots that open uh more in you know April, May, and June than ever before. So that's why I'm really encouraging players. I know I was shot and I broke my heart to have a couple just jump. And they were and they have a real shop. They got some things they got to do better. But, um, man, you know, kind of to really start to focus, like I told you, on your high school season. I mean, you, you know, you've had a, and, and what level you're playing at and, and get get the right investment in the right hands so you can focus on, you know, playing great basketball, helping your team win, 
it's not, another thing, James was an easy sell because he had to be, you know, the year before from that guy. And I'm not just over pumping your nephew. I mean, I'm saying Cole had to win. And he had, they, they won again. Yeah. If you want to know, they had to win. And, and there's a couple of kids I'm working with that has the same talent. And I told them, you were a peace player last year at South Grand Prairie. All the coaches noticed you. Now, Jesse, go lead South Grand Prairie. Now you got to go win. That's that's right. what I need to sell. I know what verbiage you use with my peers and colleagues. And that's what I want Jesse to be focused on now. I, and not panic and run for the hills. I mean, it's a chance. We don't know that yet. But that's what I'm, we're having our calls about with him. So, okay. but those are the things I think that both the camps expose or highlight. And those are the kids that I work with, um, you know, and that includes some kids that have gone division one. Um, you know, I've had a lot of kids that I saw sophomores and juniors that man kind of went through the uncommon approach and, you know, like I said, save money, but, trusted the process and they ended up right. D1 and but we just identified some things that I could see man now nah, that kid don't have a jump shot but I'm gonna put him with this group I'm putting with the worst players in the camp you know some kids be like damn CJ one now as old coordinator when I had a real elite camp at Texas State if I like the guy I'm gonna put him with the worst players see if he can lead them to a win in a tough and it, that's te that's boardroom talk now CJ's jump shot, that's fixable, but that's what I mean by the camp and why it's designed. It never hurts a player, but you look for certain things if you've been a coordinator, and that's it. And then you got three coordinators input, which gives me a real chance tonight on these calls to help players moving forward after an okay. exposure camp. Well, you talk about working with a few players, and uh, we've been kind of you know promoting the uh, the Wednesday training sessions that you have. Um, so you, if I'm correct, you got two left now, two up left. To, uh, this week and next I'm, week. I'm hoping I had two left for seven to 9 PM for the high school. Uh, you know, a large percent of that was for the varsity players that I'm working with that are seniors in San Antonio, just to, just to make it real affordable and really prep them on some concepts to stand out some areas they're weak, same stuff They they're going to benefit from it. If they do it. I've already told them don't get, when I come to a game in the fall, you don't think I'm praying that you're the best on-ball defender in the gym, you're, you're talking, you're doing things to stand out to college coaches. That's what we're working on. Plus, you know, isolating one thing on defense this past weekend was without – that translates to any defensive system in San Antonio. Uh, and one thing on offense that coaches look for, college coaches look for. So about an hour of it is concept, an hour of it is workout, just kind of – more high level workout but with a focus point. So that's a typical workout on Wednesday night. And it does translate to them eighth graders and ninth graders that are serious about getting better. Cause hell, I don't maybe been one of your guys that saw the show, uh, a kid named Isaiah Oates. Uh, he's the best after seven workouts. He's better than my seniors. And so he's talking better than anybody in there. He's going to be a bad little sucker in a couple of years. Cause he's getting some, yeah. He, he's accepting. I'm. He's eighth grade, and I'm, I'm now. I'm feel like I can ride him harder than the some of the seniors in there because he's right. embracing it, right? Right. And he can play. Right. So now right. Isaiah probably in tenth grade when at these at the Alamo City Showcase, right? he's probably gonna be standing out like a sword from. So good for that young man who's been coming out and going after it, even though he's a little bit up. He's think, he's listening. He's yeah. taking that to his insight because the talent was there when he came out. Thomas Oates' his son. Man, I just love seeing that. That's that's the goal of these Wednesday workouts. And the reason I mentioned that is I'm really going to talk to Isaiah and the six other eighth and ninth graders in there to see if we can't make it, you know, double that amount. That would be worth it for me yeah. to continue with the future prospects on Wednesday nights. Yeah, and I think that's a good thing that I yeah. – and again, that's why my my whole word to a lot of parents towards those investing your child to a trainer or a program that you feel like you're gonna get your value out of. And I believe what you're doing on Wednesdays is a good look, a good opportunity for kids to kind of get that that beginning thought process. Of, is this is this something that I love to do towards that I can stand behind and 
and make sure I have everything behind it. So, and which and the college coach and the college coach from at the last camp, man, I always get insight afterwards. I said, "What you think, man? What can I do? What can I do better for you guys? What can I do?" And man, I always respect for and kind of know my background and and um, even if there are new guys that I meet, and, um, you know, I, it's okay to maximize your potential. Mm -hmm. And a company that you pay thousands for, I mean, these guys pay for these group services. They're not forcing Bobby to maximize their potential. Exposure is a byproduct, really, of if you get yourself from elite varsity college or recruiting. If you have a roadmap, there's a great chance. So I provide both, like, you know, on the back end. But, like, some of the, again, my best stories last year was a kid that got himself to that level and had some options. But they, he didn't want to go to New England or he didn't want to go to – and it was truthful. It was honest. They didn't charge thousands. and But – he was a state champion or he was most improved or he was a high level varsity and had a great senior year and started. Those are all wins. Yeah, that's a hard sell though, you know, but if you put, yeah. if you put a pen to paper on like an NCSAs or whatever, I mean, I, I don't mind pen to paper on like guys that nobody knew or really like did some research on who signed through like their real platform, what you're paying for Mm -hmm. as opposed to the fact that the object is to maximize your potential. And what does that mean with the back-end film evaluations? Next Monday, speaker to my players is going to be the, the head coach of the number one ranked team, preseason ranked team in NAI. And I think he's one of the better coaches in the country. But red flags, green flags, Q&A. Red flags, green flags, Q&A. Maximize your potential. That's uncommon. I'm giving you all of that while sharing you to over 30 years of relationships as you elevate your game. But again, I go back to some kids that said, Hey, that's the hard, that's the best I've ever played. That's the hard, that's the funnest I ever had as a senior. Cause they play. What's wrong with that? Their role was much bigger than the uncommon approach. They played at a much higher level. They won. They got into the third round of the playoffs and decided not to play college. That's okay. Exactly. We don't know that yet. And that's why I say, don't mistake what my real passion and program is. Get in guys' looks. I can get them 30 times looks. You can share. I'm just going to be very player-driven by January. What's your record? How much has your health defense gotten better? Are you leading on film mm -hmm. like what I would look for that would scratch you? Nonverbal cues. That's the stuff we do in evaluation is take clips and show them what scratches them, like literally game clips, coach, mm -hmm. and clips that I would recruit. Now, when those clips become a full game to three consistent games, now you're a college-ready recruit, mm. period. So the, guy, the guys that jumped, they had shit to do. Let's just be honest. They had a lot of work they can do, and there's a lot of, I wouldn't say fake grants, but the portal – has caused an influx of institutions giving schools enough money to build a JV grant team, a walk-on team. If you have a if you're a walk-on team, understand this. And I'm not dogging it, I get it, but understand that next year with two and a half scholarships, I still got to go beat what I have in front of me. So you there may be one out of the 16 to 18 guys on that walkout on team that fight so hard they get on a roster spot. Oh. I saw one that was in my program. I, I blew me away when I went to the uh, regional finals of the, you know, Sooner Athletic to see a kid from San Angelo sits on the bench at Langston. Hardest working, toughest kid. In, that's the one kid that probably uh, took that JV label or to his advantage and just – said, shit, we need him on the roster. He may not ever play like a D1 walk-on, but that be careful of that because you're seeing it left and right. But that's to get a seat, receive an offer. I'm not gonna, from the same three or four schools. Yeah. I, I'm not saying don't go, but I'm saying that's what it is. That's what I do with parents. Parents may call me. I'll talk to them about it, both good, bad, and different. Won't tell them what to do, but just help them with the knowledge on that kind of situation, especially if they're trying to be forced into accepting it. They're going to have that money all year. They, they That's a new thing because they could lose three players, like I said, from the portal and need some 
bodies. But that's just, again, a little bit of knowledge, a back end that's really kind of goes on and stuff to be aware of. Well, um, moving forward, what's going on this weekend? I think this weekend is the invite, right? This is the finale, right? This is it. This is is it, man. I always have my right intention. I hope guys come out and don't wait that we invite. But, um, I mean, again, two things we're doing is like, St. Mary's, um, and I, I have no problem saying that. I, I know Bubba, he, it's awesome. He's a young, he's been there forever. He's paid his dues. His dad's yeah. a Hall of Fame legend who, who passed away. They're close family friends of ours, Coach the Myers. But, um, you know, I mean, that, I love the fact that he's in a new situation. He's trying to change what mm-hmm. St. Mary. And I'm not saying change it. Remember, his dad was a coach. He's been there. I'm saying just change the style of play. I mean, but it, it, he's the coach now. Put, yeah. put coach yeah. in and, and he values toughness and he, he always calls me. And I said, why don't we just have one of my camps? Right. You invite 15 guys that you like and you get to see them. It ain't going to hurt them. I said, you get to really evaluate them and I'll give you the, I'll, I'm going to invite the top prospects from each camp in 2024 that I thought were the toughest and the most yeah. college ready. I don't know if they're D2 good or fit Bubba, but it's hopefully it makes for a great finale. Yeah. And then, and then, if you're all district, um, you don't need an invite. You do qualify. You can go, but you've got to be all district, an elite varsity player for this last camp. If you're in San Antonio and you're an all district 2025 or 2026 kid returning, there's limited spots, and you want a real opportunity before the season, there will be at least 20 to 25 selected invites that are college yeah. players. I tell these guys that <clears throat> on a four camp, I say, hey, if you're all district, you're not getting one call and you pay for a bunch of stuff, that there will be 25 guys that are that are full ride players that are at some level that you know sign up for this camp. And there'll be about eight, ten or other coaches there outside of St. Mary's staff. But here's what I tell an all district kid yeah, locally, come beat them out. You're, you're not gonna be hiding in my whip his ass in segment one. Go ahead, leave your mark. Right. They know right. they know he's scholarship. They right. don't know you. You're an all district San Antonio player. Whoop did he do? That doesn't make you a college scholar. But getting that deal, eight to twelve in a basket, and outplay them, you yeah. will leave with interest. Yeah. That's where I get excited just seeing that kid. I got a real shot here for right. 120 bucks, and that's what I mean. The first three hours, you're going to be in different situations. If you're the baddest defender and there's four or five coaches on the basket and there's 12 and they know same thing and they know the four guys at your basket that they already offered okay, are, are, and have offers and you outplayed them without hundreds of people, you immediately have changed your life. I'm not right. kidding. Like, change your goal. That's, a, that's the uncommon part of the spring. That's as close to a spring Final Four camp layout as I'm going to do at St. Mary's this time. For that kid locally, and that mean that could be South Texas. That's an all district legit nice high school player, and the twenty five to thirty kids that between me and St. Mary staff really work to invite and get there over the next four or five days. After I wrap up this report, okay, all right. And then uh, last thing, hey, why don't you have you ever thought about doing a, a future prospect academy? Yeah. I mean, that's that's something as soon as this next two workouts are over, especially as some of these younger kids trickle it in, that I want to extend these workouts. And then I've done them in Houston over Christmas break because I know I can get the numbers. Okay. So if we come together somewhat, and I know the numbers will be there. I would love to do that in San Antonio. I can find a gym for a, a future prospect camp over Christmas break. I do one in Houston, Coach Tally, because – I know I can get 30 to 35 out, you know. So if we can kind of get that range of kid that's coming to these deals, and, man, I would love to do a future prospect camp locally. I mean, that's, okay. a great, that's a great way to channel in over the next couple of years to see. Because, again, you know, my son, uh, Tate, took up golf, and he's the best golfer at Piper for his age. But, I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, he, he, right. he, sh- he shipped the loves. And that's right. another thing I tell parents. Let's, let's right. track their progress and see 
right. are great if they're following the plan and if their game is really that means the seven days a week they're probably doing things with the knowledge they're getting yeah. and the hunger they have to give themselves in position to get to get a college offer you know okay. and that's that's it I mean that's what it's that's all it. about let's definitely okay. try to talk after the next uh, couple of Wednesdays okay. about future prospect and again San Antonio you blip this out there if you're an all district player 2025 or 2026 you can go to uncommonbasketball.com take a spot and you'll be right nose to nose with coaches in that gym not just St. Mary's coaches that know in a 12 group basket or whatever that those four have offers and they all want them too so think about uncommon if you've never been to a camp and outplay them outperform them that I'm not going against them. They can still whip your ass, but that's the approach you have to have to right. do anything in life that you want. And that is not failure. If you, if you go at it like that and you fall a little short, I'd probably be calling you saying, no, nah, you need a plan. You got a real shot because of your approach and you're an elite varsity kid. That's the guys I like help when I say discover talent. And I end when I had to recruit guys sometimes, and those guys get hard looks in the spring as well because they know they're winners. They may be peace guys, coach. Let's call it like we see it on a roster, but they get themselves on a roster and they get recruited because they bring that to the table if they take two guys out the portal. That's what coaches know about the uncommon kid. Right. Well, look, man, I appreciate your time. Let's get this out and get this to the to the uh, San Antonio area to let them know. Austin also. Austin, we want to get this yeah. to you guys. Again, the invite is open. Uh, we only have – slots are limited. So, please, if you think that you need a little assistance. And, you know, I'm going to give him a testimony real quick on Uncommon Approach. You know, I knew James was going to do some things. I wasn't really worried about it. But you know what? I talked to you several times and I said, well, you know, know what you're not going to do? I didn't want to miss an opportunity. And that's why I made sure I, I put James with Uncommon and, and you, because it was the opportunity that you gave them. And, and you give all your players. It's not just to say, well, you know, hey, I, I went through all my resources because to me, the investment was worth it. You know, if I didn't invest and, in and, and I, again, I, I would have missed out. You know what I'm saying? Nah, and so and to and me, again, it was an opportunity that you gave. So, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's what I do. I, that's what I do out of hand. Once I knew he was going to Kingsville camp, but any camp, so that's all the, 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 the simplistic form of it is like the kids that once they kind of go and go through the camp, of it, if they let me go, they're, they're going to Stryon or Kingsville, a and Commerce, and I know two days in advance, I'll call the coach and say, tell me what you think. And I'll message the player, man. Make sure you're – remember the, the things you learned at camp, man. Those were real, man. Just – you're not – point is like in that needle in the haystack, I knew James was going to be there. I knew – I can't. I can't believe they didn't sign Avon. But like I said, every they, they were all five guys I gave them names on. I knew were scholarship level players. James being that too. And remember, I was 50-50 on James throughout my camp until that one four and four winning way segment. Right, so it's I mean, it, so I'm, I'm using him as an example as far as when I got to the four and four winning ways. I said, nope. Now I see the player, and I talked to him. I said, that's the only time in this camp that I saw a scholarship player. Even though you got now, if you lead Coda the same. Success they've had. That's the best thing. That's a blessing, son. Opportunistic now. The ball's going to be in your hands. You'll make it really easy in the spring if you lead them, if you get rolling. And so even though he got signed early, like that, that's when I, and, and that's not enough, that segment's when I saw scholarship, you know, when I was able to talk to them within 24 hours. And same thing, that start, grow that. That's your money. That's your ticket. And so, the five scholarship players that were at that camp, I just – I knew who was going. I let Coach O know and his staff, Coach Robinson back last year. Man, these five guys I know are scholarship-level guys. I didn't know who else was going to be there. Got hurt a kid, but that's – get you an extra look when you have real relationships. I'm just not one to push, push, push because mm -hmm. I'm trying to scale it for the hungry kid. I'm trying to scale a little bit for a player and a parent that wants real help but knows Johnny's serious about playing basketball. Right. And he wants right. a real chance to go after, it. and that's it. So, um, but that's well, a great like I told you, man. I think you're, I think you're good for the city, you're good for the community, you're good for 
Central Texas also. And again, I just think that, you know, if, if you're looking for an opportunity to make sure your player plays at the next level and you haven't come to any of the uncommon events, please just reach out and, and again, give it a chance. It's again, a small investment. You go from there. Yeah, get your guy, man. Elijah, something. Thousands of dollars, just one time, one time, one time payment. Just try it. Go get ahead, your guy. Shit, I, if I was wanting to play college in San Antonio, one time payment for 120, been, I know exactly. it's going to pay. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah, you, you, you're not going to be at a basic, regular St. Mary's elite camp. It's going to be exclusive uh, with St. Mary's now working together on it. But you can get one of those 40 spots if you're all district. But there's going to be still my usual three college coaches on staff from other levels. Start putting my pen to paper if you put this on there. And I'm going to call maybe five to six or seven others, depending on signups. If I see signups that are worthy of me calling and telling somebody to get in a car, like I do for the RCS showcase, and I get eight head coaches to work that, I kind of already know. I mean, that's the easy. That's another thing. Um, but I, I would go out there for, with 48 max players at max and that setup before a week and a half, two weeks before season starts. And yeah. so, and I'm going to ask you, you go in a lot of gyms, you know what you're talking about. You see talent. If there's guys you like that you text me, they're, I'll invite them, man, because of what you're doing and you're out more and you're doing a different lane. But see, when lanes come together, yes. man, we really have the power to help kids. So you've seen guys like you, I, I mentioned guys. I was at Kingsville and you said, oh, yeah. I know those two guys. See, I didn't. I remember what one was like summers or I said, yeah, they just, yeah. they just mm -hmm. looked apart. So if you have contact information on players that I should invite that you've seen or like, or if you know, even if you said there's a kid at Austin Westlake or there's a kid at so-and-so at a smaller school that played great at fall league, then man, I'm on it after today. I'm going to wrap up the report. I'll call them. I'll okay. for your referral and give them an invite because okay. you, you know about my program and platform and you know the kid that may benefit that has a real shot. I'll yeah. personally invite them. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll say coach refers you. And so, yeah. and that's how I, you know, that'd be great. Maybe that's eight to 10 guys that, man, they leave there maybe heading the season and more people know about them. Settle yeah. down. Not, not get, maybe not getting off on but more people know and put you on their board. Like I would have, like yeah. we, wrote on a board that we're going to follow these guys now. Right, 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 right. Well, hey, man, thank you for this time. Uh, we get this information out as soon as possible. We're going to get out today, by the way. And then um, let's just keep doing it, man. Keep uh, just – I appreciate you allowing allowing me to be part of what you're trying to do. and, and get Please come out too, man. Please come out if you're around Sunday. Please yeah, stop by Sunday, come I out and me and, check it out. Give me a chat and check it out. I think I am. I'm going to try to come by because, again, I want to get that exposure piece and just get some kids in the gym and just kind of give a little little, little video of that. That'd be nice. That'd yeah, be really yeah. Nice. especially, man, if it's local kids that because uh, you guys are really hands-on with the local kids. I mean, it's great. And, I'm, man, that'd be awesome. Man. And then please, when we get off over the next 24 hours, if you go through your Rolodex of kids you've seen and liked, even if you just know what high school they're at, I, I've i got the directories. I can get a hold of them. But okay. at least it's a good, credible invite from a coach out there that's, you know, in gyms and have seen players and no players that are getting a little bit overlooked. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'm on it, man. I'll call them personally. That's after today. That's all I'm doing from Wednesday to Saturday. Let's do it. Again, thank I you, appreciate coach. You, coach. I don't know, man. Thanks for your time, man. Appreciate yes, you sir. always. Always. Take care. Be good. Yes, sir.